Good day to you all, dear family, and happy Sabbath and Sabbath blessings to each and every one of you. Today, I would like to talk a little bit about our Savior and many other things in this sermon to shed some light on some subjects that I believe need to be shared. And so, I know and understand so much how Satan is constantly casting that dark cloud around those of us who are seeking to enter into the kingdom of God. It's happening everywhere. As I continue to get emails and text messages and such regarding people's lives and the things that are happening therein, uh, it is evident that Satan is making his rounds once again as he has done from the beginning of time until the very end where he is constantly trying to destroy everyone and discourage them. And I know how Satan is constantly trying to misrepresent who Christ is. Satan is always placing that cloud of lies over uh, his truth. And we need to do everything we can to not allow that to affect our life. We need to understand how Satan is also trying to seek our minds away from the mighty helper that he may try to abide there and make a home and rather than allowing Christ's help to be uh, working in our lives. He's trying to destroy Christ's ability to understand who he is and what he's doing in our life. Christ is love. Satan is hate. And he is going to do everything he can to cast a veil over the works of Christ. And we've got to do everything we can to see to it that we're not going to allow that to happen. Because Satan seeks again to lead us to ponder over our sins, over our faults, over our deformity and character, over our iniquities from the past when we've been bewitched by Satan and doing things that we shouldn't be doing for a season. Many of us have found ourselves being that prodigal son, and many of our loved ones are even in that condition right now. But that doesn't mean that they're not Christians. It just means that they have fallen into their weaknesses, and they're being bewitched right now by Satan. But one day, by the grace of God and His mercy and His tender loving care for us, He's going to reach down into the depths of each and every one of their lives, and He's going to bring them right back, just like we're going to learn through the through the multiple sermon series that we have coming through all the parables and what have you. The parables are very important for us to learn from and it will help us strengthen our walk with Christ in this world, especially in the seasons that are coming and the time of trouble that's at hand. We've got to strengthen our walk and relationship with Christ because I know how what Satan is doing is he is causing discouragement as much as he possibly can, which is his designed object in making this come to pass, in discouraging us so much that we can't seem to get up off the ground because we're not good enough or what have you. But Christ is there to make sure that uh, we can get up. He's, he's our God. He loves us, and he wants to help us overcome this world and make it into his kingdom. And understand this, dear family. Jesus sees the guilt of our past. He knows everything about us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. We need to be not discouraged, but we need to take comfort that Christ speaks pardon to us through his life sermon and his works that he displayed in his life that is found in the beautiful Bible. And we should not dishonor him by doubting his love for us and the truth that he gives us and just know and understand how Christ says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, which brings me a lot of comfort. Every time I'm down in the ground and I'm trying to get up myself as you are, come now, Christ says, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, my children, okay, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as wool. If we're his children, this is prophesied to happen and he's going to make it happen because he loves his children, those who are contending and striving. So let the feelings of guilt be laid at the foot of the cross forever. It will help you so much. It has helped me so much to realize this as I strive to perform this myself in my life. Because the debt has been paid in full, brethren. And when we comply with what is required of us in confessing and repentance and asking for forgiveness and what have you, when we do our part and we work in this relationship with Christ, He's taking care of everything for us as long as we love and worship and honor Him and obey Him and what have you and build this relationship with Him. We're going to be sons and daughters. We're going to fall. We're going to have to get up. We're going to have to confess. He's building us up to be that strong person 
for what may be coming uh, a part of our life in the future and any obstacles that may be coming like in the time of trouble and what have you so that we may be working out today to be that strong Christian soldier in the future. Christ loves us and he's not trying to push us down and allow Satan to destroy us. He's there to help us. He loves us all so much and he wants us to make it to his kingdom where he is even building an internal home for everyone that loves him. John 14, 2 and 3 says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have not told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. He says that. He says, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So take comfort in that and understand. Okay, brethren? It's very important that we do that because the closer we know Christ, the closer we get to Him, the closer we understand His revelations and what He's done for us, the more we're going to have the strength and power to overcome what Satan's trying to do in our life and dragging us down and destroying us. When Satan thrusts his threatenings upon each and every one of us, his accusations upon you and me and what we have done in our past, then let's all learn together to just turn from them and comfort our souls in the promise of God and remind ourselves that Christ has pardoned our sins once we have confessed and asked for forgiveness and got on our knees and prayed to him and repented and strive again unto perfection. It's like a child that continues to walk down the street who's learning to walk and falls down and gets up and falls down and gets up and then falls down and cries and, and stays down for a while but then reaches up to their parent's hand to grab it. That's what Christ is doing for us. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? So don't worry. The dark cloud may be dark in itself as Satan is, but when filled with the light of heaven, brethren, it turns to the brightness of gold that it is so strong enough that it will light up this world through us in all that we're doing with Christ and bringing glory to his name because he is the God of glory. And seeing that we are God's children, we need to also understand that we are not to be subject to feelings and emotions because Satan will rule over our lives and govern us if we are not governing our own emotions. We've got to learn to govern our feelings and emotions. When we are on the ground of fluctuating between hope and fear, the heart of Christ is going to be hurting. Okay, if we're going to doubt him because he's done so much for us, giving us unmistakable evidence of his love. And there should be no cloud that is allowed to be placed over what Christ has done. When we stop with this black cloud stuff and allowing Satan to bring us down, when we should be singing praises of joy for what Christ has done for us, all of us will see a spring of life, a spring forth in us that will bring the divine character more so in our life than ever before. It really helps when we trust in the words of our Lord and apply them to our life and focus on it and try to put away as much as possible that presence of that dark and wicked and evil cloud that Satan is casting upon every one of us to try to bring us down. That's why it's very important to get to know our Savior. Luke chapter 15 verse 7 says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons who need no repentance. Christ's love for us, brethren, is without variableness or a shadow of turning. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and we have to understand that. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says, For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore your sons of Jacob are not consumed, when they should have been consumed, but they were not, because Christ's love endures forever, and he is after the saving of his people. He's after working in their behalf and helping them to the city of God, where we can be saved forever in eternity and will never have anything more to do with Satan in his evil, wicked kingdom. One thing that I can see today as I am laboring for souls, it seems to be so difficult to win souls sometime to Christ because Satan is continually at work in misrepresenting the character of our Lord 
to the human mind, which we can turn that around. I'm telling you through the power of God, we can turn that around and we can change minds and bring them to Christ. Christ came to reveal the Father to this world in his true character, and we've got to do the same thing. But because of the false concepts which men entertain today, it shuts out that light. But we can, again, turn that light back on through the power of God, but not only in the lost life, but in our own very lives. When we come to that point, to that breaking point, in our testing point, in the times of our temptations that come to us, to test and to try who we are when we fall, we can cling to this understanding and this love that God has for us and how he's trying so hard to help us and that when we fall, we just got to get back up, cry out loud and ask for forgiveness. And he will. He wants to help us. And I want you to understand that his arm is extended to everyone that loves him and that wants to be with him. He's not going to let us he's not going to let us be in darkness. He understands us more than we understand ourselves. And I understand, brethren, how hard this world is sometimes to stand in. Okay? I'm human just like you are. I know how it seems that all we do is fall into sin. What can we do? And we're always feeling so bad with some of the things that we say that we regret that we shouldn't have said or acting a certain way we shouldn't have acted, or made an expression we shouldn't ex express, like when somebody cuts us off in the road and you make an expression in your face, like, or a mumble under your voice. I, I know how that all feels when, why did I do that? Why did I do this? It seems that we can sometimes never do right, and that we never are good enough for the Lord, and all we do is err and can't seem to do anything good for our Lord. But regardless of what Satan is able to accomplish in that, the Lord is constantly at work to open the understanding, to quicken our perceptions that man may have a right sense of what his sin is and of the far-reaching claims of God's holy law is and how God loves us and he's trying to help us reach to that perception and understanding and the quickening that we need to get away from old self and apply what Christ has done for us in our lives and knowing that his love for us will change us, it'll change our character, it will help us understand and it'll help us receive that reproof and what we need to do to change in our lives. And we will not get upset when reproof or what have you, but we will do the works of our Lord and send forth the love that springs from him. Amen. We've got to get away from this black cloud that comes over our mind and, and gain the heavenly truths that we need to be able to destroy that black cloud that's trying to hover over our life because the unconverted man or woman is going to think of God as an unloving Savior and a severe God and even a revengeful God towards them all the time. And they'll think that his service is regarded as full of gloom and of doom and, and too difficult. But it, it's not like that. Yes, God requires obedience, but it's not a grievous thing to keep his commandments. It's a wonderful thing. And it's going to be a battle because we're in a sinful world that hates his commandments. But we as Christians love his commandments. We love God and we love our neighbor and we want to be loved ourselves and we love his creatures and we love his creation. But while we're in this fallen world, we're at war with it. And we have a savior that went to the cross of Calvary and who has given us the gift of life and is there ready to pardon our sins and loves us very much. And, and when we realize this and accept it, we'll be comforted by it and we will be strengthened by it and we'll be able to walk stronger in this world and be the sons of God that we are called to be. God, as revealed in Christ, is not a severe judge, brethren, an avenging tyrant or what have you as Satan would have it, but he's actually the one that is. But a, he is a merciful and loving, tender, full of grace and mercy of a God. And the more that we read his scriptures and understand them, the, the more closer we're going to get to understand and know him, okay? Because his word is who he is. And the more we understand it, the more we're going to see his love. Because he, Christ, 
is the author of true love, which is found in the law. And we need to not forget that because it will help us again through this world. He gave his life for us so that we may have life through him in abundance. 1 John 4, 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Amen? And Christ also says in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. So enter in through the door, brethren, as we're all trying to do. Let us enter in through that door and be saved, and we shall go in and out and find pasture. We shall live and eat of the goodly fruits of God and apply everything in our life, and we're going to have that wonderful joy and that happiness that is good for our life. And as we see Jesus and how he was placed upon the cross and to save lost man and woman, the heart echoes the words of John in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. We are not of the world if we can simply understand that Jesus humbled himself in becoming a man where he associated with a sinful world and demonstrated his bright beams of love for that world and leaving us a wonderful example to copy in his own perfection of character that we're to share to the world so that they may be able to see the Savior as well. And again, as we know there is that black cloud that Satan presents before all of us, we can take comfort to know that God is not going to leave his people in darkness at any time because it is mankind who decides if he will love the light or the darkness. Christ shows to us all the way to his kingdom, to his love, to his arms, through this dark world by simply being that light in our life if we would yield to that light and reject that black cloud. John chapter 8 verse 12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen? And that's what we have to obtain to. That's what we have to work towards. That's what we have to understand and if we don't, we've got to pray and ask for the power to understand it and to walk in that light so that we can break through the clouds of darkness because I can see how so many people are constantly falling away because they just give up and feel they are just not good enough and they can't do it anymore. And so they go away hurt and broken and torn into pieces and we've got to do everything we can to preach this and to help others understand the true character of God that Satan is trying to destroy. And so this same road that we're traveling on today together as a church and a family in this world, the road to heaven, the road to change, the road that Satan loves to attack, Christ traveled on this road and is traveling on this road with us where he invites everyone as we're supposed to invite everyone and those that come on this road as we know he is the helper on this path to his kingdom just remember that christ died for everyone that we might have life through the offered grace the mercy and the works of the cross because it is a beautiful thing to understand which we can see the love of the father in all of this that christ performed in our behalf so that we can be reunited with the father through the works of his sinless son john chapter 3 verse 16 through 17 says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life for god sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved and if you look at that word might there there is a condition placed on there might be saved which the protestant world the, the leaders of the protestant churches today bypass that they don't read further okay but there's a condition placed on this and that condition is our love for the creator as well he loves us and if we want to be in that relationship we've got to love him back and obey him 
and because he's love and he only wants love and that's what his kingdom's about and so there's a condition placed on all that is going on in the works of salvation and our unity with God in heaven and all that we do together in making this all work it is a it is a whole big working system that we are in this together and helping each other and 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 working with God and accepting his love and revealing it to others and and showing it as Christ has done for us because the beloved Christ opened before a sinful world the way whereby we might be saved through his merits keeping the law of God as well as he will help us do this in becoming like him because Christ says I know thy works behold I have set before thee an open door that no man can shut it Revelation chapter 3 verse 8 so many humans have tried till this day to close that door of love that door of opportunity but they're not able to do that even John's testimony says and the temple of God was open in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament revelation chapter 11 verse 19 and underneath that mercy seat of love which our king sits upon within that ark in heaven where the two tables of stone are located contain the law of jehovah it's still safely kept and preserved and is visible evidence to the universe that is going to be preserved forever and ever and ever and all those that love him and love his holy law and, and, and strive unto perfection to keep it and stuff will be blessed by it and in the worlds to come. And as we strive to be holy as Romans chapter 7 verse 12 says the law is holy and the commandments are holy and just and good as we're striving to be like that and and having that law become our character where God is writing it in our minds and our hearts God's children will have a fierce conflict as many of us know with the adversary of souls and it will become more exceedingly bitter as we approach the closing of this world's history and entering into the conflict to come where we are going to be called to either worship God or Satan. But the Lord will again help us all stand in defense of his truth and make it through just like our brothers and sisters did during the time of the Dark Ages. And while we journey through this world, we have also got to understand that none will gain an entrance by their own works. There's nothing we can do to save ourselves. Christ has saved us. Christ is saving us. Christ is trying to bring us to his kingdom. He is the one that saves us. We cannot save ourselves. No, God himself has the honor of providing a way for all of us because he again is a savior. And it is so complete with Christ fulfilling that office in love. And it is so perfect that man cannot by any works he may think he can do add to the perfection that Christ already established in all that he has done for us God's love is so wide and large and beautiful and big and it is broad enough to receive the greatest sinner if he would accept Christ and repent and turn from his sins and this way is so narrow so holy and it is so lifted up so high that sin cannot be admitted therein a second time. Sin and unrepentant sinners will not be admitted in the worlds to come. But those who cling to Christ and take and take his hand and walk with him on this path down the road to change and into his kingdom will be perfectly established in that law and will be governed by it and will walk in it and be that perfect example and representation as Christ was for the Father. The future of the righteous is a wonderful sight, brethren, to keep ever before us as it will strengthen us. And our everlasting reward is a wonderful theme for the children of God to contemplate and to think and to ponder upon. This is why I love to be alone sometimes and and pray and ask for the dark cloud to go away and contemplate these wonderful heavenly things that Christ has revealed to us through his word and what have you because it will strengthen each and every one of us in our walk and in this sinful world that we're going through and 
when we're discouraged, it really helps remove that black cloud. Let us all learn to dwell upon the marvelous plans of salvation. Remember, we have the book of nature, we have the word of God, and we have the sanctuary. Those are the three books, and we've got to learn them, know them, and understand them because it is the fingerprint and the mercy and the love of our God, and it expresses his righteousness and his tender care for all of us, and it brings to our understanding his wonderful glory and all the merits and the wonderful things that his blood, his life has done for all of us. And it will help us work for that crown of glory, that crown of victory, and, and, and what have you. And so these subjects we should keep ever before us and remember them and practice them and make it a part of your life as I am trying to do today because it really does help, I'm telling you. And remember this and let this comfort you as well because Christ tells us in Matthew chapter 18 verse 20, and lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. Amen. He's with us all way, every single moment of every single one of the days. He is not going to let Satan tear his flock to pieces. He will allow us to be tested. He will allow us to go through the refiner's fire. He will allow these things, though, to happen to us. But it's not for the purpose of destroying us. It's for the purpose of making us stronger and to be more wise and more understanding in seeing how even though we go through, even though we go through these things, Christ is still there to help each and every one of us out. So do not be discouraged when you're being tossed to and fro by these tests and stuff. Let nothing toss you to and fro. Let Christ help you in all this and he's going to do that. And let us all as a church also remember that we should be more considerate of others' weaknesses when they are exposed in their sins instead of casting judgment on them and pushing them down and sending them away and thinking they are so wicked, but rather realize that they are a victim to Satan and they have things to work out just as you do and just as I do. And we have got to love them as Christ would love them. When Satan knocks them down or is having a season of victory over them and they are displaying some of the most horrible sins, that is the time when we are to show them more tender, loving care and help in applying Matthew 18 in a super loving manner and help them rather than displaying a finger pointing as well or a judgmental and a character of how could you do this or how dare you do this and what are you thinking type of expressions but simply talk to them as a loving child as a loving parent as you would want to be treated if something's happening with you or as your own child is falling down to the ground and is hurting and is bleeding and is looking for a way out and is looking for some help and accepts and acknowledges what they have done wrong. We've got to do more helping as we draw closer to understanding who our Savior is and reflecting Him in every way, shape, or form as possible. Christ came for the sick and for the weak, and we are to do the same thing in helping them back up and setting them back on the path of righteousness. And it is going to be done in God's timing and which is suitable for them because God knows better than we do and we have to learn to have that discernment with God and we can have that better discernment by obeying him and getting closer to him as well in our own lives and it does not matter again how many times they sin if they ask for forgiveness and realize but yet again fall over and over again we are to show the same love the same forgiveness the same tenderness as Christ has shown for us over all of our years through all of our lives in the things that we have done so many times in the past and how many times have we've tried to overcome things and have fought so hard and have got caught doing things that we shouldn't or caught saying things we shouldn't have said or caught expressing things we shouldn't have expressed or gestures that we shouldn't have done or language sign language that we shouldn't have have uh, been partaking in how many times Christ had to forgive us and accept our, our confession to him well we have to do the same thing it's not that we're here 
to destroy the, the sick. We're here to help the sick. We're here to lift them up. We're here to love them. We're here to be there for them. We're here to be that light for them. If Christ would treat us like we have found ourselves in our own faults and failures in treating others and how we speak to them, who knows how many people would see Christ in the world today if his character was like ours towards other people. But thank be to God that Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit who loves, who, whose love endures forever is not like us, but is perfect in love. How wonderful we have a wonderful God in heaven who is so perfect and so merciful and so understanding and so caring and so loving that we have. And it's nice that we would obtain to that perfection as soon as possible because it's really a pleasant thing to be around that type of atmosphere. So let us all learn to be more like Christ, brethren as I'm trying to be, and I know that everyone's trying to be, and don't be discouraged when you're not, but just keep trying, keep practicing. That's what this is all about. We're striving, and as we strive, we're gonna make it to heaven. If we're striving, contending, you're gonna go there, okay? We're called to strive unto perfection. And if, if wherever we fail, Christ is gonna strengthen us eventually. Sometimes it takes a day to overcome one thing, or some trait or what have you sometimes it takes a lifetime to overcome something it, it it just depends on what we have inherited in our life that is so difficult to overcome and how close we get to Christ and that's why it's crucial to study him and what have you because it will help us get to that mark get to that point and don't be discouraged when you fall down or you run out of gas but call out to God and take hold of his enduring power and press forward. I have seen more souls do some of the most wretched sins, even in the truth, that would stun the hearers and question everything about the sinner who performed it, and over and over and over again. But let me tell you something. When they kept putting the fight to Satan, eventually their evil traits and adulteries and fornications and worldliness and connection with the world and yoking up with unbelievers and what have you and even openly rebelling against the the god of heaven and earth which is so wrong which is the most horrible thing to do i have seen them get back up out of that wretched condition and become one of the strongest front runners as like an ox in his prime getting out of that mud and taking off like a racehorse. Because a lot of times when people go to the gym, what happens? Physically, they come out stronger than the one that doesn't even go into the gym. So you have to understand that those who are being tested and those who are falling are the ones that are getting prepared. And as they get prepared, they're overcoming, they're striving unto perfection, and sure they may fall down again like the just man does, but he rises up and he gets stronger and he keeps getting rock solid and he gets stronger and stronger and when this is happening we're not to tear them down and help Satan we're to lift them up and help them pick that weight up and get stronger and we're supposed to be doing it in our own very lives amen and so in closing I just pray and hope that all of you would be blessed by this sermon and this message this heavenly truth that we have got to become more like that physician in heaven and we've got to be that physician assistant in this world because time is running out and we've got to help everybody as much as we possibly can because it says in Matthew 19 10 verse 13 where it says and it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house behold many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples and when the Pharisees saw it they said unto his disciples why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Amen. And so the saving power of God will come to all who desire to escape the web of Satan. And if, if we want to help in this work of saving souls, then we need to learn of Christ and do all that we can in perfecting 
his divine character in our life study the law study the life of christ because he's at the end of that law and we will be a wonderful light in this world brethren god bless you all who are contending and striving for the faith and peace be unto you this day and have a wonderful sabbath and sabbaths to come and a blessed week bye bye